Mound and Ryan Road and Telegraph is shut down between Thorn Drive and Carlton Rockwood Road due to accidents. Sunny and very windy today with a high of 49. It's sunny and 43 degrees now at 1019 WDET. Michigan's system of funding local governments is broken. The problem will get worse if nothing's done. That was Wayne County Executive Warren Evans giving his annual State of the County speech last night. He talked about progress the county has made toward addressing unsustainable legacy costs and talked about improving county services in recent years. And there, of course, we heard him talk about the way we fund local governments here in the state of Michigan, something that has been on his mind a lot lately. This is Detroit Today on 1019 WDET. I'm Stephen Henderson, and that is where we start our show this morning with Warren Evans, the county executive of Wayne. He uh, will join us to talk about his speech and what is going on in the county a little later in the show. We're going to talk about school closures, what the, they are deciding to do in Lansing, uh, now that they've announced that a lot of schools are going to close around the state, they seem to be backing away from that premise. And there may be some other kinds of dynamics at work. So you want to stay tuned for that. Uh, last night at his uh, State of the County speech, Warren Evans also said that billionaire Dan Gilbert's plan to build a soccer stadium on the county's stayed stalled jail site in downtown Detroit and help build a new jail elsewhere it's got to be improved before the county will accept it. He joins us now to talk about that and other issues. Warren, welcome to Detroit Today. Thanks, Stephen. Good to be here. Absolutely. And if you want to join the conversation, have a question for the county executive, have a thought about the jail, have a thought about local government funding uh, or the county's finances, give us a call. 313-577-1019 is the number to join that conversation. 313 313- Five seven seven one zero one nine. You can also go to the WDET Facebook page, put your comments there, or go to Twitter and hashtag Detroit Today. We'll try to work your comments into the conversation. You can also watch this conversation on Facebook Live. We are Facebook Living today from the WDET studios, something that we have started doing, this idea of radio and television together. It's a little strange to me, but uh, people seem to like it. So uh, go onto the WDET Facebook page. You can uh, watch us or comment there. And as I said, we'll work your comments into the conversation. Uh, Warren, I want to start with, uh, with the idea of the county's finances, which I think uh, we don't talk enough about when we talk about the county anymore. But you know, when you took this job, when you were elected to this job, we were in a we were in a real pickle in terms of finances, I and mean, the county was in deep, deep trouble. We've moved significantly ahead uh, in that time uh, because of things that you have suggested that we did, things that you've negotiated with uh, the, the the various partners uh, who who have uh, an influence over the budget. Give us an update, though, of of where we are with just financial stability in in the county. Well, I think we're we're in much better shape obviously than we were 2 years ago. Our uh, accumulated deficit is gone, our structural deficits are gone. Uh we've had 2 years of budget surpluses. Uh the the probably combined budget surpluses over the last 2 years is about 80 million dollars. Uh and that's a big part of a couple of things. One is uh getting our bond rating up. We've had significant bond rating increases, which helps us to get a lower interest rate when we have to borrow money to build, and that's obviously uh, the problem we find ourselves in uh, with the jail. So that's very, very positive. Uh, and, you know, just the overall unfunded liabilities we've had. I mean, I'm I'm kind of amazed when we started, uh, took office, we were about $1.3 billion uh, unfunded in our uh, OPEP or health care. Uh, and now we're down to $350 million. Uh, so we've actually eliminated a billion dollars in, in two years in that unfunded mandate, and I think that's, uh, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, and you did that through concessions and, and, and restructuring. Talk about the sacrifice, then, that uh, you're asking of employees or retirees. What, is, what does that look like? Well, the changes were, you know, were, were significant in terms of, uh, changes in the retirement contribution, um, you know, the multiplier, they call it, uh, uh, some reductions, you know, there. 
and and higher higher um, uh, what am I looking for premiums on health care yeah uh, which is significant and uh, which is uh, the problem is there's no you know there's no painless way to do it uh, and the majority of your cost uh, is personnel and while that's the last thing you want to cut in reality if you're going to make those kind of cuts it's it's the place that you've got to cut uh, but I mean we sold uh, excess real estate you know we worked on a number of things to restructure uh, and we always had an eye for, we, we really understand that the county is people uh, providing services to other people, and so it's a people business. Uh, you can't keep good employees if you don't have some substance there, uh, and I'm hoping that as time gets a little bit better, we'll be able to uh, um, do more for our employees. You certainly deserve it. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, the, the the jail site? Uh, you talked some about it last night. Uh, I was joking with you before the show. I'm going to get you to spill all the details of the negotiation <laughs> on the show this morning so that everyone will know exactly what's going on. Uh, but, of course, you have to do this behind closed doors. I hear things from you know various quarters in the community about where they stand. Uh, give us uh, as much as you can about uh, where we are and the likelihood of this actually Happening, I think that's the thing that's on most people's minds is, is this real? Is this just something that uh, Dan Gilbert is talking about, or is this a, a, a strong possibility? Uh, it's real. Um, I don't know how strong a possibility is because there are a, a, a number of issues about the deal that we just don't know. I mean, on the surface, it looks, uh, it looks very interesting. But what we don't know is what is the courthouse going to look like? Is it going to serve the needs of the 65 judges we have in Wayne County. Is uh, the jail going to be adequate for the needs that we have? doesn't mean it isn't. It just means in the proposal, the detail is not there. Right. And so, you know, you'd be buying a pig and a poke, and we, we clearly don't want to do that. But we have the collateral path of finishing on the existing jail going on at the same time. So the, the reality is one is not holding the other back. By the beginning of May, Walsh Construction Company, that is responding to our RFP to build on the existing site, will give us their proposal with cost. We'll have something to evaluate the 1st of May. Rock Ventures has got to do the same thing. If if I have something that looks good in the beginning of May, um, knowing how long this project has been stalled, uh, it's it's not going to sit well to wait for Until someone they... else to finish what they need to do. I mean, the uh, the Rock Ventures people know that we have been trying to finish this jail for 18 months. You come four months ago and say, I, what a deal I got for you. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, and, you know and then I'm supposed to sit back and stall uh, to evaluate it. I don't think that's fair to, to, to us or the taxpayers. I, if they... Show us a good proposal. There are some advantages to the rock proposal. You know, and I'm not into the soccer. I mean, I am, but I'm not. My, my <laughs> business hat doesn't have anything to do with soccer. Sure. So, you know, there are some advantages to the rock proposal. One is that they do the construction. That's a headache that the county doesn't have to have. Another is that any cost overruns would be absorbed by them. I mean, that's a big plus. Yes. Uh, parking at the site that they want to do it is far better than parking downtown, and everybody knows that. Sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm in with $300 million. That's it. Sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. But I don't have 301 I don't have 302 <laughs> I got 300 uh, And so the Gilbert proposal has to meet our needs at that cost. If it does, we're excited. But we don't know that yet. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you, just as a resident of this community, not as the county executive, do you think that there is a higher and better use for that site than the jail? And I, I sort of ask that in the, through the lens of hindsight, which is what we all have to sort of apply at this point, that, that when we made the decision to build a new jail on that site, things were different in the city. The things were different in that corner of downtown, in fact, than they are now. I don't think anybody argues that we would make a different decision now. How much in 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 your mind, though, does that have to play a role in the conversation about what we do here? 
Well, first of all, I agree 100%. I think when the jail was first conceived of, you know, that was the downtown criminal justice district, and uh, I think the game has changed now. Uh, so I think there is a higher and better use. But that's not really what I'm charged with deciding. What I'm charged with deciding is what's in the best interest of Wayne County taxpayers. What's the cheapest price that I can get a quality facility that the taxpayer is going to have to pay for? And if that winds up being on not the best site, uh, I think at least myself as a taxpayer, oh, so be it. And you're, so, I mean, you're okay if, if uh, in the end we get a jail there and everyone says, see, the county screwed that up. <laughs> we had well, a chance for something much better. Yeah, I, 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 I'll take that hit. Uh, <laughs> and though the hit will come, but at the end of the day, the taxpayers of Wayne County, I mean, I, I may get the hit from Oakland, Macomb, somewhere else, a Wayne County taxpayer. Right. Uh, has got to be concerned about how much he or she has got to pay uh, for a jail and understand that they're not subsidizing soccer and they're not uh, making a decision on anything else other than they've already been taken advantage of in the initial phase of the jail. The least I can do is make sure that their end cost uh, is no more than it should be and we have a quality we get facility the facilities that, we that gets need. what we need. Yeah. Uh, This is Detroit Today on 1019 WDET. I'm Stephen Henderson. My guest is Warren Evans, the county executive of Wayne County. We are talking about his state of the county speech last night, uh, talking about uh, the jail, the jail plan to either construct, finish constructing the jail on the current site or move it to a new site and have something else uh, they are on Gratiot at uh, 375. Dan Gilbert has said that he'd like to see that happen and that he's willing to, to pay some money to help it happen. Uh, where are those negotiations? Is that likely to happen or is that just sort of a pipe dream? We're also talking about the county's finances and state support for local government, an issue that the county executive has been very interested in uh, and talking about lately. If you want to join the conversation, give us a call, 313-577-1019. What do you think about the proposal to build a soccer stadium on the proposed jail site? Do you, or uh, do you think that's a good idea? Do you think that's a bad idea? Uh, do you think we ought to move the jail and the courthouses uh, over to the sort of near east side of Detroit where they would have a little more room than they do uh, down on Gratiot and we might get some fancier facilities. We might get some less than adequate facilities, I suppose. Uh, what do you think about that idea? 313-577-1019. You can also go to the WDET Facebook page, put your comments there, or go to Twitter and hashtag Detroit Today. We'll work your comments into the conversation. Now let's go to Desmond in Detroit. Desmond, welcome to Detroit Today. Uh, good morning, Stephen. Hey, how are you? I'm doing quite well. How about yourself? I'm good. Uh, I, I, I have all the accolades in the world for Dan Gilbert, and he's been a great boon to the city. But one has to ask, who is he making this city for? You know, I'd be much more interested in hearing him you know, do some have some proposals for Morningside or Brightmore or Island View, mm-hmm. as opposed to a major league soccer stadium that's going to cater to. Let's be real, not Wayne County residents. <laughs> you think Wayne people in Wayne County are not going to go see soccer, doesn't? <laughs> I don't think you say. people in Michigan are going to go see soccer <laughs> if we're speaking. I'm the not common sure. Talk. I'm not. I'm not sure. I agree with that. I don't know. I don't know who's going to go see soccer. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that I think that's the best use for that site either. Uh, I think it's an idea. It's an interesting <laughs> idea. Uh, I would push back a little bit about uh, on your criticism of, of Dan Gilbert. I mean, I think uh, we have come to expect all kinds of things from him that he never really promised he was going to do. If you go back to this, his initial press conference uh, when he announced that he was coming to Detroit, all he said he was going to do was move his headquarters from the suburbs into the city. He didn't say he was going to buy 98 buildings downtown. He didn't say he was going to... Uh, get involved in neighborhood revitalization, which he has in in recent months and years, sort of pivoted to that. So I'm not sure it falls on him to do the things that you're saying. I do think, though, that there's a serious question to be asked about who benefits from the things that he does want to do. And if, if he wants to build a soccer stadium on that site, uh, I think it's it's totally fair for all of us to ask what we're getting out of it. 
Uh, and, and when I say we, I do mean uh, residents of Wayne County, residents of the city of Detroit. Uh, and I think we, we have every right to ask that, that the county be made whole or better. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, I'm not sure that, that just making the county whole on the jail thing is sufficient given that the, 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 the value of that property to Dan Gilbert is a lot higher, frankly, than it is to the county. I mean, the county can put its facilities almost anywhere. He needs that property to, to sort of fortify the other interests that he has. So I think those are all fair questions. Uh, and so thanks very much for the call, uh, Desmond. Uh, Cindy in Belleville, you're up next. Welcome to Detroit Today. Oh, hi, Stephen. Thanks a lot. Yeah, um, sure. I listen every morning. Oh, very good. Um, you like that. <laughs> yeah. Executive Evans, I was lucky enough to be invited to the speech last night, and I found it really, really inspirational and, and brave on a lot of points. Um, on the jail especially, um, I think, well, I think that that's a really bad site for a jail. I think that that property value is going to go up and up over the years. It's just a really bad site for a jail. I also don't think that handing it over to Dan Gilbert is a great idea. As you said last night, um, his initial offer uh, years ago was $50 million and now it's even higher. Um, turning the city over to, to Dan Gilbert is, is not such a great idea, and I think that you're being very, very thoughtful in, in considering all the options. And I just want to say that I, I just think that you're being very, very thoughtful and very brave, and I was very inspired by your speech last night. Yeah. Cindy, thanks very much uh, for the call. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, I appreciate that. That's a great compliment uh, to you in, in navigating this. I mean, I, I, I actually can't imagine what the pressure on you in this situation looks like. I mean, there's got to be a lot of different people with a lot of different interests sort of coming at you saying, well, here's what I want or here's what I think uh, should be the way that we think about this. And, in fact, as you point out, your job is to is to protect the taxpayers uh, of of, the, of Wayne County, and and it's not always it's not always a straightforward proposition, I suppose, to figure out what exactly those interests look like. They, there are some conflicting interests there as well. No, absolutely, and uh, you just can do the best you think you can do. I mean, one of the odd things, uh, the reality of politics is, if four out of ten people hate your guts, you won by a landslide. Um, right. <laughs> and that's one of the things that you just got to keep in mind. Not everybody's going to be happy with everything you do, but hopefully if they do their homework, they'll understand that the decision was made reasonably right. to try to protect the best interests. Defensively, of, uh, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go to John in Gross Point. John, welcome to Detroit Today. Oh, hi, hi Stephen. I was just going to observe that, you know, your last caller had mentioned, and, 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 you know, I think it's a question that I hear all the time, uh, which is, who is this for? Right. And, who, and, 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 and I just think it, it has to be, any investment has to be for people who can pay for it. And, and if, otherwise, it's not investment, it's charity. And if, if we're looking for charity to fix neighborhoods like Brightmore and things like that, I mean, then, then that's what we should be looking for. But it, 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 it isn't uh, if, if if there's a compelling economic case, um, then something is going to you know, you're going to attract economic development. Uh, it, there's a, currently a compelling economic case in downtown Detroit, and and it it may take a long time before that happens in the neighborhoods. But yeah. I I think rejecting economic development because it's you know it's benefiting somebody else is a dumb idea. Yeah, yeah, John, uh, great point. It's something that we all sh- should all sort of keep in mind as we talk about redevelopment in downtown in the neighborhoods that that there does have to be some sort of investment motive and and that's harder to come by in in some neighborhoods still uh, I, I i do think that people like dan gilbert can be part of the solution to that i think some of the work that he's started to do is is sort of uh, pointing in that direction looking at that but but i do think uh the, the, the patience you're talking about is is necessary but it's also frustrating right uh, the, those of us who live here who see the city and the condition it's in i think want things to happen sometimes faster than they than they might uh let's go to Sean in Detroit Sean welcome to Detroit today well thank you sure. um uh your guest I, i'd like to ask you know i 
understand your job you made it clear is to look at the economics of it for the taxpayer um, but are you considering I mean my personal opinion flat out is a jail would be a black eye on Detroit period that's my personal opinion um, for mostly obvious reasons but are you looking also at the long-term social costs because we all know 20 years down the road the spin-offs benefits and costs of a jail versus other use are going to be dramatically different so are you looking at those long-term social economic costs on society and benefits so so sean let me ask you this i mean we 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 have a jail of course in wayne county already it's parts of it are almost coming up on a hundred years old uh, other parts of it are are in bad shape uh, the, the people who have to be housed there are the victims really of that condition are you arguing that we sh- shouldn't we shouldn't replace that well i'm arguing that that is a fairly central uh site in detroit and it's not necessary that a, the, the that the long term social benefit costs uh could be much greater if it were put to some other use. I see what you're it saying. It is a contained use that doesn't interact with the city. Yeah. And okay. there's nothing organic about a jail. It doesn't go in and out. It has no benefit to a kid that lives four blocks away. If anything, it's just a symbol and a really negative one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great, great point, Sean. I'll, I'll ask the county executive to, to respond to that. Yeah. And I, and I don't, you know, if there's a million things you'd rather build than a jail. But the reality here is we have two jails uh, that are not fit for prisoners, officers, or families to come to. Uh, They're in disrepair. Uh, The operating expenses to keep those existing jails that contain people um, are way too high. And so the idea of building this jail is to be able to eliminate the other two to have a jail that is clearly uh, meets all the constitutional mandates uh, and is an adequate place for um, prisoners, workers, and, uh, and families to come. I mean, I, I certainly agree uh, that jails don't help anything, but they, uh, I also agree that they happen to be a reality of life uh, as long as you have criminal courts and crime. Uh, and so having a new jail that is state-of-the-art and humane uh, is far better than having two beat-up buildings uh, downtown that are costing us an arm and a leg and will continue to because the amount of capital improvements that have to go in them to keep them operating um, will be far more costly uh, than the debt service on building a new jail. You know, uh, one of the things I think uh, not everybody understands is how bad the conditions are in those jails. I mean, if you go inside and and visit somebody or just take a tour of them. I mean, it, it really is not okay. Uh, and in addition, uh, there has been some court supervision that has talked about the conditions and, and how, how bad they are. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the jails is you know, going on, as you said, 100 years old. The other one may be 30 or 40 years old, uh, but what people don't know, it was designed for 550 inmates. That's what it was designed for when it was new. The day it opened, it had 1,100, and it's had 1,100 inmates in there since day one. Now, you can go back and say the county did a miserable job of designing that, and I would be the first to say amen. (laughs) But the reality is it's functionally obsolete and has been for a long time because, I mean, just think about uh, you living in a two-bedroom house and then having a, a relative's family come live with you. The bathrooms are inadequate. The kitchen's inadequate. Not enough sleeping space. It's the same thing in that jail, and it's a... It's a sad commentary, but it's a reality. It's been worn out for a long time because of the overuse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take one more call here. Barry in Green Elk Township. Barry, welcome to Detroit today. Thank you, Stephen. Uh-huh. I just wanted to make the point and have the, uh, the County Executive Evans comment on it. And the Part of Gilbert's negotiation with Major League Soccer was predicated on his ability to secure the Gratiot site for a stadium. Yeah. I would think that that would put... Uh, Mr. Evans in a very strong negotiating position with Mr. Gilbert. I mean, he needs that site to get his team a field to play on in, in the <laughs> city. Now, how is that coming into play in his negotiation with Mr. Gilbert? Yeah, uh, Barry, great point. I would add to that again that that Dan Gilbert owns Greektown Casino, which is right next to this jail site. If I were the owner of that 
that property, I also would not be terribly thrilled about the idea of a jail next door. Talk about the leverage that you feel like the county has in this negotiation. Well, I mean, it's, it sounds like leverage, but I don't think for one minute uh, that a soccer franchise for Detroit is contingent upon that site. I mean, I understand that's the only one he put on his application, uh, but I don't believe for one minute uh, that he wouldn't be able to change sites. And I'm not sure that everyone um, in Detroit thinks that's the best site for soccer anyway. I, I, he certainly wants the land, and I think the land being contingent you know, to his casinos and that is, uh, sure. is a business interest. I'm not saying the soccer stadium wouldn't be there. I'm saying I wouldn't lose a night's sleep uh, <laughs> if he bought the property and still um, used it for something differently. Yeah. Okay, Warren Evans, County Executive of Wayne County. Thanks, as always, for joining us on Detroit Today. Good to be here. Thanks. We, we should know something on this jail uh, issue by 1st of May. 1st of May. All right, so that's soon. We'll have you back before then to, so you can spill all the details before, <laughs> before they're public, right? <laughs> all right, uh, coming up next, we're going to hear from some youth poets in the region, but also we're going to talk about school closures and the state's new partnership model. How is that going to play out here in the city of Detroit and around the state of Michigan? Stay with us on Detroit Today. Last spring, you asked us to reduce fundraising that interrupts your listening, and you changed everything. So now this message right here is WDET's Spring Fundraiser. Keep your shows coming, renew your support, or become a new member now at WDET.org. It's Wednesday, you know, that thing they call hump day. You're going to need a little pick-me-up. Get over that midday slump at noon with Culture Shift, your soundtrack to discovering Detroit. Let the music charge you up. Then it's the late lunch at 2 with Snap Judgment, blending dramatic storytelling with killer beats. Now you got the fuel you need to get over this hump. Culture Shift at noon and the late lunch at 2 on 1019 WDET. WDET is supported by Michigan Opera Theater, presenting Mark Adamo's Little Woman, Louisa May Alcott's coming-of-age story, featuring the studio artists of MOT and members of the MOT Orchestra, March 11th and 12th at the Macomb Center for the Performing Arts. Tickets at michiganopera.org. Your city. Your town. Your voice. 1019 WDET, Detroit's public radio station. You're listening to Detroit Today on 1019 WDET. I'm Stephen Henderson, and as always, thanks for tuning in. Citywide Poets is a literary community for young people where they explore their lives through the written and spoken word. It's part of Detroit's Inside Out Literary Arts Project. A group of young poets recently shared some of their work with WDET's Sandra Swoboda. First, she took...